as important as 2008 was, 2010 was to be a more important election. 2010 is a census year, and we redistrict every state and congressional seat following the census. If you win state legislation in 2010, you get to draw the new maps that control all the elections over the next decade. The winner is predecided just by the way that the districts are drawn. Even under the scenario of the Democrats winning the vote by the biggest margin they've ever won in modern Wisconsin history, the Republicans would still get 59 seats minimum. That's an astonishing manipulation of democracy. Congress would never fix this problem because they have one interest only, and this is to stay in power. It's the biggest heist in modern American political history. I am Katie Fahey. I'm with an organization called Voters Not Politicians. We started from a Facebook post. I saw that there was a pent up energy. So I just thought I'd, yeah, try. <laughs> First there was 10,000, then there was 20,000. And this thing just sparked. We're working with the anti-gerrymandering drive. They're absolutely worried about us. They know that once this gets on the ballot, it almost always passes. This is going to be the battlefield moving forward. If they lose, it's no holds barred. There will be a vicious fight by the people who are in power. We are seeing efforts to undermine the very core values of American democracy. This may be the last time we have an opportunity to do something about partisan gerrymandering. The people of our country are sick of this, and if we don't come and say that enough is enough, then nothing's gonna change. Hi, my name is Chris Durrance, and I'm one of the directors of a new documentary called Slay the Dragon, along with my colleague, Barrett Goodman. And Amir from Universal Cinema asked us to make a video about the, about the film and take you behind the scenes. So I thought you'd tell you some of the stories about how we came up with the idea, the choices we made, the characters we decided to focus on, and how we ended up with a film that takes a subject like gerrymandering, dry on the face of it, and tries to make it entertaining and, most importantly, inspiring to viewers. So first off, the idea. Well, it all started in 2016, and Donald Trump had just been elected president, and Barack and I, like a lot of people, were looking around and trying to understand this country and how it had become so polarized. And Barack picked up a book called Rat Fucked by a fantastic reporter named Dave Daly. And that really was the start of the journey for us. Because what Dave had done is take this little known event, it was back in 2011, it was called Project Red Map, and explains, and what that book did really was explain so much of, of present day politics and its dysfunctionality in the States. He went around Michigan and Pennsylvania and North Carolina and in forensic detail reported on this plan, and it was a genius plan by the Republican Party to take power in these states and use that not only as laboratories, use them not only as laboratories for change, but to influence and take control um, in Congress. And it was fantastically successful. And he also did it, the, the, the architect, and we'll hear about him in a moment, Chris Jankowski, he did it for $30 million which sounds like a lot, but in the context of American politics, that is peanuts. I mean, that is less than most Senate campaigns. And with that, he gained control of around a dozen states and basically the lower house in DC for a, the best part of a decade. So that was, the, that was the genesis of the story. But how do you actually go about making that into a film? And imagine going into a pitch meeting and saying, I want to do a movie about gerrymandering. It's like, eye roll, please. But that's literally what happened. Barrack um, had a relationship with Participant Media uh, in California and had a meeting with a fantastic producer there, Diane Wyman. And she immediately saw the importance of this. I mean, she had had so many pictures about 2016 and polarization. Most of them seemed to involve road, road trips down, you know, through red and blue America, trying to understand what was happening. But 
they weren't that exciting to her. When we pitched this story, she immediately saw the importance of it and was, was just on board right away. They put in they, most of the money, well, a large part of the money, and that got us going. But the other thing that we wanted to do pretty early on was not just tell the story that Dave had told in his book, the story of 2011. We're now in 2016. We knew the film wouldn't come out for you know several years after that. We wanted to go to these states and see what was happening on the ground, see what citizens there were doing to take the fight back to politicians, to wrest control over their states from the people that were abusing power so egregiously. So we went to Pennsylvania, we went to Michigan, we went to Wisconsin, we went to North Carolina, and there we saw so many grassroots efforts. The most interesting ones for us were in Wisconsin and in Michigan. In Wisconsin, we came across a group of lawyers, a motley crew who had decided that the best way to try and take power back was through the courts. There really was no legislative route back in Wisconsin. The gerrymander had been so successful, there was just no way through. But the lawyers saw an avenue, they took a legal route. And there was a lot of excitement nationwide about this particular case. It was called the Whitford case. And so we approached the lawyers, Ruth Greenwood, Nick Stephanopoulos, um, Peter Earle, Doug Poland, and they said, sure, come on board, tag along as we, as we take this all the way to Washington. And we did, and we thought, fantastic. And there was something about this case that was just um, fantastic to follow. The reason was, it, it's, it, was, it was a federal case, and so this was the, this was the one chance a lot of people thought in the field that could change the rules about gerrymandering nationwide in one fell sweep swoop it's a nationwide problem but many election um election rules are set by the states and so it's very hard to do to to make any reforms that affect the whole country but this is one case that could by tackling gerrymandering do a huge amount of good so we were excited when we had a chance to follow these guys in Michigan, we came across another um, effort. This one was totally different. This was a grassroots effort. And what these guys were trying to do was not take on the nationwide problem, but fix their, their own state. Uh, they didn't want to do it through the courts. Michigan has what some states have, but it has this ballot measures uh, where ordinary citizens can change the constitution of their state. And there was a fledgling group led by a political novice called Katie Fahey. Um, and we heard about her. They were traveling around the state, basically informing people about gerrymandering, about why it was a problem, and galvanizing the citizens of that state to try and fix it. And you could already tell that there was, there was something in the air. It was very small, just a few hundred people at that particular point when we started tagging along. But you could already tell that something was happening, that a movement was building. We still thought that they didn't have much of a chance. There's so much money and power in Michigan. I mean, all of it is vested in keeping uh, the politics just the way they are. Thank you very much. But we knew it would be a great story, a, David, a kind of David and, David and Goliath type of story that just seemed like it would fit in really well with, with the story that was unfolding in Wisconsin. And so we began. We needed to raise a fair amount of money. Participant media had chipped in, uh, chipped in a chunk, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough to finish the film in the way that we wanted to. And so we set about starting to tell the story, but also fundraising. It's something that, you know, if there are filmmakers watching this, it's somewhat, you know, something you all, all know is a, a huge part of, of, of the business. I mean, you have to have ideas that have appeal and that are able to generate the funds needed to actually finish the films. And we were very fortunate that uh, we had, we came across a, a financier in New York, William Von Muffling, who is very much committed to improving the, the state of our democracy. He spends a lot of time and a lot of money in democratic causes. And he immediately saw the, uh, the merits of our film and what we were trying to do and came on board. And it really is thanks to him and thanks to Participant that the film ended up uh, the way that it did. One of the biggest ones was the Flint water crisis. And that's where we start the film. 
And that was something that happened quite late on in the filmmaking, actually. What we really wanted to do was grab our audience, grab them with something unexpected, but something that was a direct result of gerrymandering. I think a lot of people have heard of uh, heard of Flint, heard of the deaths, heard of the, the terrible poisoning of the residents of that city. And, you know, a fair few people have heard of gerrymandering, but I don't think many have put those things together. But what we were able to show is that they're directly connected. That Flint was, you know, was almost a logical and, and tragic outcome of the severing of ties between representatives and the people of a city, a county, or a state. I mean, that's just what happens when the people in power uh, are not beholden to the people who put them in power. It's, it's sad, it's terrible, but it is kind of as simple as that. And, and so we thought it would be a very powerful way of bringing home the consequences of gerrymandering. I mean, a lot of people know about about the practice, about the packing and cracking, and have seen the maps and the squiggly shapes, and we do a fair bit of that in the film as well. But we really wanted to bring home the real world consequences, why it affects you and me, how it affects I, you know, what's done on education, what's done with our roads, what's done with our healthcare, you know, how we're able to hold politicians accountable. And the terrible thing about gerrymandering is it means the politicians no longer feel accountable. And a lot of things can go wrong. And one of the reasons why we think the film is is resonating in the way that it is in this current moment. I mean, I'm talking to you in the mid, you know from Brooklyn, New York, in the middle of a coronavirus pandemic. I think a lot of people are looking to our elected leaders, to to the mayors, to governors, to the president, and thinking about politics and power and elections and accountability and representation in ways that they hadn't necessarily thought of before. And, and I think that you know, people see that there's a, there's a responsibility that comes with power and that gerrymandering is a big part of, of the problem when politicians no longer feel responsible. She was, she just came out of nowhere. I know. She put a Facebook post up the day after the election. Hey, I'm thinking of doing something about gerrymandering. Anyone want to join me? And to her surprise, she'd actually done that a couple of years before. Zero likes, zero response. She did this one right after 2016. And she suddenly, there was just this wave, this tidal wave of, of excitement and people, everyone just saying, how can I help? How can I join in? She was kind of overwhelmed and she told us, it's kind of funny, that she then kind of had this oh shit moment where she realized that she put to figure out how she was going to do it herself because she really had no clue. So the next thing she does is go on Google and Google like how to fix gerrymandering. And that takes her to Ballotpedia and she hears about how she can do a ballot measure in Michigan and how she's going to have, she's going to, have to change the constitution and she's going to need to raise 350,000 signatures or thereabouts from all over the state. And it's kind of daunting, but she realizes with a movement behind her that it's entirely possible. happens is uh, in the film, which is kind of important for us, is that we managed to get an interview with a Republican operative, Chris Jankowski. And he really was the, 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 the main guy who's, you know, who's, who did in 2011, you know, he, he was the architect of Project Redna. And it, you know, you can't put all lay or the fault of, you know, all the problems in America today at, at his feet. But he's done something that no one else has done before. He basically took control. And you'll see if you watch in the film how basically power and votes have become totally disconnected. There's quite a few states in, in America at the moment where Republicans have far fewer votes, but have either majorities or even super majorities, an unassailable uh, control over both houses in the legislatures in a number of states. And that really is all the brainchild 
the evil genius of, of Chris Jankowski. We interviewed him. He said, yes, it was kind of a surprise, but it was a fantastic opportunity to put some questions to him. And he's kind of proud of what he did. Deep down, I think Barak and I both came away from the interview with the sense that he might feel a little bit of remorse, a little bit, but not a huge amount. I mean, he's a Republican, and I think when he looks at those states and the Republican um, politics in those states, I think he thinks that that's a good thing, that what happened in Wisconsin, that what's happening in North Carolina or in Pennsylvania at the time, those were those were beneficial for those states. Does he think that perhaps it all went a bit too far and has lasted too long? Perhaps. But there's a sense among many of the operatives, many of the map makers, where they've, I think, become a little bit divorced from the people. We're, we're seen as pawns in a game that they're playing and that we're kind of the marks. If you think of gambling, we're kind of the marks in this game. And, you know, more fool us for being the marks. And to us as, as filmmakers and storytellers, I think it only underscores the importance of Katie's story and the story of the, of the attorneys out of Wisconsin who took the case all the way to the Supreme Court. You know, those are, they're the real heroes. They're the ones who should be inspiring us to make change. And, and that's why I hope you guys see the film because you'll see what amazing, what amazing people they are and, and how they're working tirelessly to, for the benefit of all of us, frankly. It's not often that you see a film made by two directors. Um, Marek and I have worked together for many years. I think it's coming up on 10 years now. And we've done a whole bunch of films together um, some history, some present day stuff, some with heavy reporting, some with a lot of archival. This was the first feature doc that we've worked on together. But I think that we both have such a strong reporting background. We both have a minimal ego. And we just had a sixth sense for what each person was able to bring at a particular point to the project and that the, what the film needed at each particular moment. The, we almost never had to discuss like how the division of labor was gonna was gonna work. It was it was kind of seamless over the year and a half, two years that we were making this film. Um, it's, we're pretty lucky. Um, I certainly um, feel very lucky that we get to collaborate in that way. You know, we're coming out in the middle of a pandemic, I've talked a little bit about how the political environment is such that I think people are really getting a sense of how important it is to be able to hold politicians to account and to be putting people in power who you can also throw out of power. Gerrymandering stops that. Fixing gerrymandering, I think, will go a long way to restoring health to, Ameri to American politics. And one of the great thing about one of the great things about the film is that we partnered with Participant um, out of Hollywood and Magnolia, the distribution company, and they both have a vision for a film that doesn't just end when it's released. It's a film that is going to have a lasting impact. They have a campaign to foster change in Michigan, in Colorado, in Wisconsin. That's really exciting. Katie Fahey, the main character in the film, has gone on to set up an organization called thepeople.org, which is also working nationwide to foster change. So we're super excited. We hope you see the film. We hope you love the film. We hope you get engaged. And we hope that you too are inspired, just like Katie was, to get up and do something and be the change that you believe in. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay well, be, be healthy, and be safe. Bye.